When the sunlight shines through the blackness of space, it's black. But I was in sunlight, and I was able to look at this blackness. I mean, what are you looking at? Call it the universe, but it's the infinity of space and the infinity of time. I'm looking at something called space that had no end, and at time that has no meaning. You can really focus on it because you've got this planet out there, the star called Earth, which itself is in its blackness, but it is lit up because the sunlight strikes on an object, strikes on something called Earth. And it's not a hostile blackness. Maybe it's not hostile because of the beauty of the Earth that sort of gives it life. Throughout the flight, the times when one could sit back and really appreciate what an amazing adventure this was, it was only during those little periods of time when you had a, a chance to stop and do the things which you weren't programmed to do. A lot of times when there was nothing else to do or after everybody going to sleep and I, I couldn't, I'd open up the window and look around. One thing every spacecraft ought to have is a huge window. Looking back at the Earth was a pastime that I never really got tired of. Uh, who have you got up now? The other two guys are pretty sleepy. They sacked out again, so I'm holding the fort down for a while. Biomedical data recently was monitored, and uh, the CMP was uh, soundly asleep while the commander was resting, but perhaps not soundly asleep. You got the black watch watching you tonight. You picked up the night shift, I see. Yeah, it's turning out to be kind of quiet, too. We like it that way. When you're out there in this little command module, you see the risk you're taking because you realize that if the glass breaks or if the computers quit working or the electrical system quits working, you're not going to get back. And you have time to contemplate this. You have time to think about it. And you have time to run it through your mind a lot of different times. How far away from Earth now, Jim, about? It looks like you're approaching 150,000 miles. Frank, we had a little eggnog over at Charlie Dukes tonight. Uh, Val Anders dropped by. She's looking fine. Tell Bill she's doing real well. Thank you. Everything that I know, my family and my possessions, my friends, my country, it's all down there on that little thing. And it's so insignificant in this great big vastness of space. Thank you. 
What the? Okay, uh, Houston, we've had a problem here. I got three fuel cell lights and AC bus light and fuel cell disconnect. AC bus overload, one and two, main bus A and B out. This is Houston, say again, please. Gang, I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. oxygen in the service module, which provides breathing oxygen for the crew. Apollo Houston, try SCE to auxiliary, over. SCE to auxiliary. SCE, SCE to auxiliary. Okay, let's make sure that we don't do anything that's going to blow our CSM electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose fuel cell number two. about a lunar trip is you don't pass any place on the way. Going to the moon, you leave the launch pad, then you leave Earth orbit, and then a couple of days later, after passing nothing, all of a sudden you're at the moon. And that lack of waypoints, to me, had an effect of making it seem a little magical or mystical getting there. This is really a rugged planet. We're drawing closer to the moon uh, with the Apollo spacecraft. Our LOS clock, uh, loss of signal clock, continues to count down until that time that the spacecraft will pass out of communications range over the backside of the moon. On approach, the spacecraft uh, sort of dives toward and behind the moon. It was a totally different moon than any moon uh, I had ever seen before was in this eerie shadow, no motion, utterly silent. It sort of gave one a feeling of foreboding. It didn't seem like a very friendly or welcoming place. Uh, Paul, this is Houston. Your goal for LOI. Go ahead, Houston. Jim, you are go for the burn. Go for the burn. OK, Paul, is go. You're going too fast to orbit the moon. You're rocking on ready. Okay, two minutes, babe. Give it a final trim. Burn time is 15 seconds, so it's going to go in a hurry. You're in the burn position. You're ready to go. Maybe let's make this one. And then you look, and there it is. 35 seconds. And it's 2001 type stuff. The old moon is just growing magnificently fast, and it's just filling up that hatch window and you're drifting into the shadow. Okay, baby. Eight, seven, six, five, three, two, one, burn. Burn? I just open you're burning. Four to go. You're burning. 100 to go. Okay. 78 to go. 50 to go. 20 to go. Stand by, Tom. Shut down. Oh, beautiful. 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 John of Houston, he got the burn off. We're in good shape. Well, I tell you, we is down among them, it's going backwards, you know that? You've worked so long and so hard, and, and finally you're here. The burn has gone well, you know you're in lunar orbit, you know the orbit is good, you're right where you want it to be. I mean, it just looked like you could reach out and touch it. Apollo now traveling over the back side of the moon. The crew should be seeing the features, the rugged features, moving below them at a high rate of speed. Oh, Charlie, we just saw Earth's eyes, and it's got to be magnificent. Charlie, it might sound corny, but the view is really out of this world. OK, 
Okay, David, you ought to start getting your hatch closed. Say again? You ought to start getting your hatch closed if you're not already doing it. I was disappointed. I want to go with them so bad I could taste it. As far as I was concerned, that was what it was all about. Not only going to the moon, but going down the surface and walking. We're now less than two minutes away from the separation burn, which will be performed by the command module. When next we hear from them, uh, the lunar module should be undocked from the command and service module. You'll never know how big this thing gets when there ain't nobody in here but one guy. Yeah, don't get lost from out there, John. I wish I could go down there with him. You may not talk about it very much, but part of your training is coming back by yourself. See you later. Wish the damn thing could hold three people. here in Mission Control. A few moments ago, Flight Director Gene Kranz requested that uh, everyone sit down, get prepared for events that are coming, and he closed with good luck to all of you. Get going. We is done among us, Charlie. Roger, I hear you weaving your way up the freeway. You're going right down US-1, Mike. Right, copy. Looks great. Okay, all flight controllers, going to go for landing. Retro. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, and you're a go for landing. Over. Okay, Houston, we'll give you a countdown. Four, three, two, one, fire. Victory. 